ओम श्री साई राम प्रशांति संदेश वेलकम टू साई पर्स ऑफ विजडम यूजली वॉट हैपन्स इन सोसाइटी इज टू रिएक्ट पर्टिकुलरली वेन ब्लेम्ड आर अक्यूज आर हर्ट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू एक्सेप्ट सच मोमेंट्स विथ ए स्माइल throughout the life of bhagwan we have noticed that he is highly tolerant towards his critics we know how some of the newspapers and some critics came forward with all critical remarks which are most undeserving and which are false utterly yet swami did not react nor did he allow anybody to react this kind of tolerance is a feature of bhagwan since his childhood it seems some of vicious boys through thorn balls and such as thick hair and such a would run away to avoid them the student trip at bukapatnam was rather trying on young satya hardly and he was after all 14 years at that time he had to finish preparing breakfast and lunch for himself and his grandfather at putabarti in the early hours of the morning he had to have the routine breakfast a porridge like mixture and broken rice or cold rice and curds as an alternative a few older boys also were jealous of the new special student at the school they would rag him they would even manhandle him in the sands every now and then and douse him with waters of the chitravati spoiling his clean clothes he was never a ruffle he would tolerate the ragging in a sportive spirit and with a smile bearing no ill will and very strange enough not merely reacting to the deeds of his classmates instead he helped them in spite of such behavior from his classmates satya continued tutoring a few students in the evening for a token fee in the home of bhima rao the priest at the rama temple this is what it is forgive and forget is the main teaching of bhagwan which he practiced right from his childhood he also come to know how devoted bhagwan was as a child he always stood for devotion discipline and duty when he was in bukapatnam there are certain instances are recorded there is a temple of goddess chaudamma in bukapatnam satya would go there in the afternoon to have his lunch in solitude since good drinking water was available nearby it is a favorite hunt after lunch such a would be lost in thought in the quiet sanctity of the temple gazing at a small picture of sai baba of shirdi which he always carried with him there was subarao a local government clerk and his wife tippamma 
Tippamma lived in one of the rooms in the Lakshmi Narayan Swami temple complex with their children. After her husband left her work and the children for school, Tippamma would walk around the temple every day in the fulfillment of her religious duties. At times, she noticed such a sitting at the back of the inner shrine of the Hanuman temple. Curious to know what he was up to, she once hid herself and observed such a. She saw him circling his hand in the air and to her great surprise, materials for worship appeared. He materialized a picture of Sai Baba of Shirdi and after worshipping it, lit the camphor on his palm and offered arati. He also materialized fruits and powdered dried ginger mixed with powdered sugar as an offering to the deity. He then put it all into the school bag and went away. Tipama watched all this with amazement, realizing that Satya was no ordinary boy. At school, Satya would distribute these fruits among his classmates. When they wanted to know where he got them, he would reply that Shakti, Shakti, in his house gave these items. It is Satyama who gives, he would say. Do not even whisper and use to coordinate friends. Do not even whisper this to the elders at home or anyone else, for she will not give any more. He had decided to confine such amazing demonstration to his schoolmates alone. Tipama's daughter, Nagalakshmi, would perform Shirdi Sai Baba worship at home. Satya would stay after school, sitting at the corner of Supara's puja room until the worship was completed. He would then take prasadam and leave. Often, Satya would leave flowers at Tippamma's doorstep so that Nagalakshmi could use them for her worship. Initially, Nagalakshmi even rejected the flowers because Satya did not come from a Brahmin family. But she soon overcame her bias. Later, she grumbled to herself that she preferred garlands to flowers, as she did not have the time to weave garlands from the loose flowers. From the following day, Satya brought garlands instead of flowers on his own. In this way, even at such an early age, Satya exhibited his omniscience. Just imagine this, without telling directly what she wanted, Swami could know and do the needful. This is first instance of his omniscience, recognized by people of his own village in the temple premises. And then coming to another aspect of Bhagwan, he said later years, as you know, the worst of the punishment that he gives to those who don't listen to him was to observe silence. He will not look at their face. He will totally ignore them for a considerable period of time. This will be viewed as a testing period. Devotees who are very close since then, when once they are kept aloof, feel the pain. They feel tortured. They would not bear this. 
when the transformation took place in them, Swami begins to talk to them as if nothing had happened. That is his reformation. Even as this monitor in the school, he did similar thing. He set a good example in maintaining cleanliness in the room and discipline. As a monitor, he was authorized to punish his classmates on instructions from the class teacher. Such a narrated in later years an interesting incident. He was ordered by his teacher to slap each of the students for some fault they had committed. To do this, he had to stand on a chair because he was so small. He would not slap them hard enough. So the teacher, in his turn, punished Satya with nearly 40 slaps to show him how Satya bore the punishment with no complaint. A humorous yet revealing incident took place in the early years. According to the accounts of biographers, Kasturi and Ganapati, Mahbub Khan, a teacher in Satya school, passing by, was shocked to see little Satya standing on the bench as a punishment. The teacher of the class, moreover, was seated in his chair in front of the class. Mahbub Khan asked the teacher, why he was sitting there, well past to the period. The other teacher whispered that when he got up, the chair rose with him. The chair was stuck to him. He knew not how. Mehbub Khan knew instantly the problem and suggested to the teacher to end Satya's punishment. When Satya was asked to step down, the chair fell off and the teacher could move about free. Years later, while relating this story, Baba would say that he had willed it to be so, not out of anger against the teacher, but purely to demonstrate himself and gradually prepare the minds of people for the announcement of his identity. Most perhaps this is another miracle known to everybody, witnessed by all students and teachers in those days, in the early years, when he was in Pukkapatna. That's how Swami's divinity began to blossom year by year and came to be known by the public, by and large, near and dear. That's how Avatar expresses himself. English teacher Subbarnachari tried to punish Satya, probably for having given the impression that he had not been taking notes in the class. Subbarnachari asked him to spread his palm. As the teacher raised the cane to strike Satya, he saw an image of Sai Baba, of Shirdi in Satya's palm. What a wonderful miracle it is. More of such things, we'll certainly study them and enjoy the divinity.